Would you say that that is your defining solo as a – Well, it was not only the defining. It was the first time that I really got to know the groups, and we really got to know each other. Sixteen hours it took to do the solo. And after 16 hours of playing the solo every way that it possibly would take those notes to put them together, he looked at me and said, you know how long have we been out here doing this? I said, that's about four or five hours. Sixteen hours. And it was just unbelievable. Sixteen hours straight? Straight. I don't think I went to the bathroom. I didn't eat. So you started at what time? It was in the afternoon, I guess, around three or four or five. So you would finish, like, at dawn? Yeah, we had to finish at dawn because we had a gig that night. Yeah, probably. We were going to drive to Providence, so I said, all right, this is it. And was it just work, or were you kind of drinking to and talking? Was it a good experience, or is it just like going to the office, essentially? It was the greatest learning experience of my life. You should be bringing your saxophone. Maybe I did not hear that. My mommy has a horn back there. Here it comes. I'm afraid to be in front of audience of people without having the horn. But they had been playing Jungle Land in concert before the recording, before the 16-hour session. And when it came time to the solo, Clarence would play something different every night. You can find some of those on YouTube, I think. And he never actually heard the solo the way that we've all come to know and love it until he heard it on the record. It was put together, Bruce put it together later with, I guess, Chuck Plotkin. How did it start? I mean, how did it? Okay, it started off like the first few notes were, I'm not going to start. I've never done this before. I've never played this long enough. I'm going to play it so I don't feel nervous. That was it. That was the first four hours. And what were you debating in those four hours? What were the different entry points of other versions of that? Like, would it be Springsteen saying, that's not what I want? Or are you saying, that's not what you want? He was saying, you know, maybe we should approach this a little differently. Let's try another approach to this. Because it's like writing a book. It's like telling a story. The soul is an epic. We're writing stories that go down in history. And you felt conscious of that at the time? I was conscious of that at the time. This is a historic song. This is a song that lived beyond my life. Yes, this is the song that the soul will be here after you're dead. How did you know that? Well, I don't know. I guess I kind of had that feeling. But it was those four notes. And then we had that structure down. And then the next part. And so my 
purpose, my eye was to make him feel, play what he feels. So you kind of give yourself up to his vision. I surrender to his vision in the song. And it was a great experience for me, a great learning experience, because he taught me things about sex. He don't think he could play, but emotion, how to build things, how to build songs. He knows that there was a really, the first note was the highest note that was played. That's to get the attention of the people. To get this long, high note, something about that. And then all of a sudden, it was stuck in the middle, starting to develop. So he was trying to find the words to convey the feeling that he wanted you to turn into music. Is that fair? Yes, that's fair. And so I think we went on from there. And like Don was saying, I must have played that far, I mean, I don't know how many times, how many different ways to do it. And we finally came to the end of the song. But that was uh, basically how it happened. 